it's Stacy from the Loom Room France here. A couple of days ago I was beaming this new warp onto the Jacquard Loom here and I said I would show you, give you a, a video of, of knotting on. So here we are. Now here's the black new warp and here's the old orange warp. And I have two threading crosses, one in the wood there and one in metal here that you possibly can't see. And I'm literally taking one thread from one warp and one thread from the other. And for those of you who don't know what a threading cross is, it's a means of ordering your yarns so that they follow one after the other in order and they never get, she says hopefully, they never get tangled up and end up a bit like a bird's nest, which no weaver likes to see. So, knotting on happens because these kinds of jacquard looms they don't need any different patterning in their threading they are threaded once and the pattern is exactly the same each time it's just straight threading so basically you just knot on a new warp rather than have to re-thread And then all the knots are gently pulled through the heddles, which are called males on a jacquard loom. And they're gently pulled through and then attached to the front stick, which goes on to the cloth beam at the front. Now, I'm not using the traditional weaver's knot because I, I started to at the beginning of the warp but I've got that lovely pale gold silk that you might just be able to see at the edge here. And it didn't want, it's so shiny, it didn't want to stay in the weaver's knot. I tried two different versions of weaver's knot and could not get it to stay in. So hence reverting to this. And also I don't have the time to practice the weaver's not to be consistent in the amount of tension I can get on it. Normally I would practice doing a knot until it was fluent, just like practicing an instrument. But I have a deadline with this warp, as I'm, I have a, a photographer coming in a week or so, and I have to get this loom fully operational, fully warped up, ready for the photographer to take some photographs, action photos. Now the photographer is Colin Douglas Usher. He did the photos for my first website when we moved to France and I'm now building another one. So he's doing the photos for that and it's going to double up as photos also for something called the Homo Faber Guide, which I have been accepted into, which is a European um, guide, if you like, to um, people who use contemporary, in a contemporary way, using traditional arts. Or traditional crafts. So this kind of weaving, this old jacquard weaving on these old looms just really fits with their ethos. And uh, he'll be doing those for me as well. I shall put a link to the Homo Faber guide, Homo Faber they call it over here, and I shall also put a link to Colin because not only is, is he a good photographer but he's also a really nice guy. Right, these looms, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about these looms. I acquired them ooh, quite a few years ago now from the University of Leeds via somebody else who actually saved them from the University of Leeds. They were going to be ditched, unfortunately. They were designed and made and built actually inside the University of Leeds in the 1880s. And they, the four that I have, all have the same design parameters. So they have 192 hooks for designing, but they all have different repeat structures. And they were designed for designing fabrics for interiors and fashion for industry. Uh, so in the 1880s and 1900s, that's what they were used for, training fabric designers of the day. And it's interesting to see, as you work on the four looms, how you have to change the way you design, depending on which loom you're working on. 
So for example, when you've got this loom, which has got two repeats, you can include a lot more detail. They've all got the same weaving width, 13 inches, but you can include a lot more detail in something, excuse me, that has two repeats across a 13 inch width. When you come to the smallest repeat structure, which has got five across the 13 inches, of course you can't do that. So let me just find the next end. So you can't see that amount of detail when it's so small, each design is so small. There we go. So you have to change the way you design depending on the size of the repeat structure. And that takes quite a bit of experience and, and you learn a lot all the time. These looms teach me so much actually about materials and about designing. Now I'm using them for art, for art pieces so I can sell in a gallery. So I'm designing again from a very different perspective from the one that they were intended for. Because industry obviously is a, a different beast from art. So it's still got the same repeat elements, but the way you design your piece has a different approach, completely different approach. Although you need to still think about the repeat system within each one. So they always teach me a lot. I've probably burbled on long enough. <laughs> you can see what I'm up to. I've just got a little bit more to do. So I will show you when I've pulled it all through and got it all on the front beam and I've got my designs made. I'll probably show you some of the processes for cutting the cards when I come to cut cards. I've got some designing to do in the next couple of weeks and card cutting and card lacing and then we can actually weave. So it'll take a while yet but I'll give you a few more little videos along the way. So for today from the southwest of France, till we see you next time, bye for now.